Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Buenos dias, damas y caballeros. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sung Hun Kim, and I'd like to welcome you to the International Civil Aviation Organization's 40th Assembly Sky Talks. During the, a two-week period, we have 68 presentations provided uh, to you by um, aviation industry professionals in all types of fields. So I, I would welcome you to check out our uh, ICAO site on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'd like to also remind you that we're coming to you live, so please refrain from using your cell phones and keep them on vibrating mode. And uh, at the end of this presentation, you may want to step up to the mic and ask questions. Today is day five, session number four, and uh, we continue the talks on big data. The subject is about aviation data influencing the future. The title is Aviation Data Systems and Science, and the presenter is Nevin Murad, Associate Analyst Officer here at the ANB. Please welcome Nevin. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Thank you, everyone, for coming to my Sky Talk. I would like to take the opportunity also to thank the people who are watching us online. Today, my Sky Talk is about aviation data systems and science. I will provide an overview of this concept. So, probably you all recently heard these buzzwords, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data mining, structured data, small data, deep learning, semi-structured data, data mining, analytics. It is almost impossible that you did not hear one of these words in the last months unless you were on a desert island with no means of communication. But what all these words mean? Are they referring to the same thing? I know it can get really confusing. So let's just try to put a bit of order on all of this. So let's start by defining what is data science. The definition of data science is involving two words, data and science. According to the Oxford Dictionary, data are facts or information, especially when examined and used to find out things or to make decisions. And science is knowing is knowledge about the structure and behavior of the natural and physical world based on facts that you can prove, for example, by experiments. So when we put data and science together, we get a multidisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from structured and unstructured data. The definition that we just saw from Jules Leskovic is really interesting, but is still too academic. In real practical terms, data science uses data to gain knowledge and insights with the ultimate goal of solving problems and make informed decisions. According to Harvard Business Review in 2012, it is the sexiest job of the 21st century. Oh, I already see some people taking notes for a potential career change. So, why this recent buzz about data science? One of the reasons is the exponential growth of data, of data availability. 90% of all data was created in the last two years, which you think about, this is incredibly a lot. 75 billion of internet connected devices by 2020. And yes, there is no typo here. It's billion and not million. Each minute in 2019, 3.8 million Google search searches, 1 million Facebook logins, 41.6 million instant messages sent. And we also have cloud, mobility, social networks that are direct contributors to the data explosion. Another reason for the recent buzz about data science is the increased performance of hardware. Let's just take a moment and compare the computer power of Apollo 11 versus the current smartphone that you have with you currently in your hand or in your pocket. Your smartphone is having 1 million times more RAM, 7 million times more memory, 100,000 times more computing power. And even though with this small computer power, the Apollo team 
the Apollo 11 team was able to go to the moon and came back alive. So imagine what we can do with this computer power nowadays. On top of that, we have increased performance of algorithm and software. We have also increased accessibility and affordability of hardware and software. All this giving us unprecedented business opportunities. So now that we saw what is data science, let's look at what data science can do for us. Data science can help us answer four types of questions. One question is about descriptive analysis, and it can help us answer the question, what happened? It can help us with diagnostic analysis, and, will be, and we will be able to answer why it happened. Data science will allow us to do predictive analysis and answer the question, what could happen? We will be able to do prescriptive analysis and answer the question, what can or should be done? Often, the data analyst and data scientist roles are confused. The data analyst is processing large amount of data and draws insights from it, while the data scientist makes prediction which help businesses make accurate decisions. The data analyst is responsible for collecting, organizing data, and obtaining statistical explanation out of it. She or he uses visualization and reports so that businesses can make strategic decisions out of them. The data scientist is proficient in mathematical, statistical, and computer applications. He or she is efficient in picking and solving the right problems that can help a business excel. So let's look at a more visual explanation of the skills of a data scientist. So we have here Venn diagram that is having three domains, computer science IT, mathematics and statistics, and business knowledge, which in our case is aviation. The intersection of computer science IT with mathematics and statistics is giving machine learning. The intersection of business knowledge and mathematics and statistics is giving traditional research. The intersection between computer science and IT and business knowledge is giving software development. The intersection of all three domains is giving what we call data science, or what is needed for a data scientist to become a, data, a real data scientist, or what is what we call the skills of a data scientist. So let's now integrate what we have talked to aviation. What is aviation? I know, I won't teach you what is aviation, but it is really interesting to put this into numbers. Aviation is over 2,000 operators, close to 25,000 aircraft, 42 million flights per year. This means over 100,000 flights a day, 4.1 billion passengers, 45,100 routes, all producing billions of megabytes of flight data. And from where is coming all this data? It's coming from close to 25,000 aircraft currently in service. Airbus A380-1000 series is equipped with 10,000 sensors in each wing. The latest Airbus A350 has 50,000 sensors on board, collecting 2.5 terabytes of data every day. This data is coming from over 11 million passengers per day with their respective origin, destination, connection, with their payment info, loyalty, seat, class, and fare. This data is coming from over 100,000 flights per day with their origin, destination, route, and waypoints, aircraft type, airline speed, altitude, and position. So let's now move to aviation data science. Aviation data science involves the collection of all data related to aviation, flight paths, flight data, flight delays. It is all that we have discussed in the previous slide. It involves also the use of machine learning to understand patterns and predict outcomes. Aviation data analysis currently is mostly used in the areas of safety with the calculation of accident rates and their trends. 
it is used mostly in the areas of efficiency with the calculation of flight paths and airspace complexities. It is used in capacity with the calculation of throughput and delays, but we can do much more with data science. So ne let's now look at the potential applications of aviation data science. The applications are in operations, maintenance, loyalty, revenue management and business intelligence, safety, compliance and fraud. So the first area that will greatly benefit from aviation data science is aviation operations. Aviation data science will help network planning and optimization, optimization to build more efficient schedule. Will help air traffic flow management and optimization to reorganize route structures and reduce delays. This is a huge problem for congested airspace like over Europe and close to airports like New York or London. It will help with resource planning and optimization, for example, flight crew, flight attendants, RAM, personnel, and equipment. I will give an example with American Airlines. American Airlines have 27,000 flight attendants. So imagine the colossal time it takes to be able to optimize their duty time with respect to their regulated duty time, their vacations, type of aircraft they are trained on. So aviation data science will greatly benefit that area. Aviation data science will benefit also baggage operation and traceability, will benefit irregular operations recovery. Recently, Hurricane Dorian caused more than 1,000 flights to be canceled for three days in a row, with a peak of 1,800 flights to be canceled on the Tuesday. So imagine the huge amount of work it takes to recover and to carry all these strangled passengers. So aviation data science will really be able to help with predictive and prescriptive analysis, the regular operations of airlines. So now let's move to revenue management and business intelligence. Revenue management involves market and competitor analysis, commercial strategy, pricing and inventory strategy. For all of you who are not familiar with revenue management, it is a very complex balance of analysis to be able to sell the right seat at the right time to the right customer for the right price in order to maximize airlines' revenues. Another source of maximizing or adding uh, revenue to the airline is overbooking. I know, nobody likes overbooking. Especially, it is not very popular among passengers. Overbooking, however, involves very complex analysis to be able to predict and forecast the right amount of no-show of passengers so that airlines are able to sell more seats than what actually the aircraft is having. These analyses are performed for every single flight on every single day. So, for example, a flight on Monday may have an overbooking rate of 2%. That flight, exactly the same flight, on Tuesday may have an overbooking rate of 8%. So, if you end up finding the right estimate for the overbooking rate, you are really, really doing great. You are adding additional revenue to the airline and everybody is happy. But if you are not finding the right estimate, you end up with two situations. One situation is that you are leaving revenue on the table by not overselling enough. The second situation means that you are overselling too much and you end up with paying compensations for denied boarding of passengers. So really, revenue management, so really overbooking is very great if you find the right estimate and you add additional revenue to the airline, but it can turn the wheel in the opposite direction and become a cost to the airline. We all know that the revenue management is the heart of an airline. We know that airlines have very slim margins and a good revenue management team with the great data science tool will help an airline bottom line go from red to green. A lot of airlines invest 
millions of dollars in data science for their revenue management teams. Another area of application of Asian data science in compliance and fraud. So it involves fraud detection, for example, payment, inventory abuse, illegal booking pattern. Airlines have algorithms to detect abnormal fraud before it becomes too big. So it is something like when your credit card company gives you a call for an abnormal purchasing behavior. Airlines also have an algorithm to detect, for example, an abnormal booking behavior by travel agencies. Aviation data science will help regulatory and custom compliance. We are now moving to loyalty. This is something what Facebook and Google are doing. Airlines are performing customers' behavior analysis. They're performing customer preferences analysis, and they come up with personalized offer strategy. Maintenance is the other area where airlines will help a lot with aviation data science. We all saw that aircrafts have so many sensors, they collect so many data, and if this data is not used, it's useless. So with aviation data science, we will be able to do better aircraft health monitoring, better safety event trend analysis, maintenance schedule optimization and forecasting, spare parts inventory analysis, control optimization and forecasting. I will give you an example. A Boeing 737-NG has in total 600,000 parts. So good luck with spare parts inventory analysis, control, and forecasting if you don't have the right data science tools. Another application of aviation data science <coughs> is safety. We will be able to perform safety trend analysis. We will be able to perform better wake turbulence or clear air turbulence analysis and modeling. We will be able to perform NOTAM and segment analysis. We will have better aircraft certification data analysis. And we will be also able to predict flight events such as long landings or unstable approaches and issue early warnings. So now that we have covered what airlines and service providers are doing with data science, it's really interesting to see what ICAO is doing for in the in terms of data science. Are we doing something? In fact, yes. We do machine learning related to NOTAMs. We do research on faulty trajectories. We have just recently used natural language processing. This is an app that is summarizing working paper and we tested during the current assembly. We also do aviation data science courses and we help states to use all those data science techniques. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I would like, like to invite you to the mic and uh, ask away. Well, Nevin, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.